Dear children, we are already aware of the various aspects of reproduction and their significance in attaining our social goal of building a reproductively healthy society. We have discussed about the causes and the impacts of population explosion and the need for contraception. You will recall that any ideal contraceptive should be user-friendly, effective, easily available, reversible, with no or little side effects. Today, we will discuss about the various contraceptive methods available. At the end of this class, the learners will explain the various methods of contraception available for couples today. Compare the advantages and limitations of the various methods of contraception. Exhibit life skills of scientific thinking and decision making along with socially responsible behavior. So, what is contraception? Contraception can be simply defined as the use of artificial methods and techniques to prevent a pregnancy. Many different kinds of contraceptive methods are presently available. They can be broadly categorized as 1. Natural or traditional methods, which include periodic abstinence, coitus interruptus and lactational amenorrhea. Second, barrier methods, which are condoms, diaphragms, cervical caps and walls. Third, the chemical or hormone-based methods, which include IUDs, injectables, oral contraceptives and implants and finally, the surgical methods that are vasectomy and tubectomy. In this class, we will be discussing about each one of them in greater detail. Let us first talk about the natural or traditional methods of contraception. They principally work by avoiding chances of meeting between ovum and sperms. Periodic abstinence is one such method in which the couples avoid or abstain from coitus from day 10 to 17 of the menstrual cycle when ovulation would be expected. As you would recall, the chances of fertilization are very high during this period. It is in fact called as the fertile period. Therefore, by abstaining from coitus during this period, conception can be prevented. The next natural type of contraception is withdrawal or coitus interruptus. It is a method in which ejaculation is avoided by the male partner so as to avoid insemination. You are all aware that mammary glands of the female start producing milk towards the end of pregnancy by the process of lactation. And, dear children, amenorrhea is the absence of menstruation. Lactational amenorrhea is a method of contraception based on the fact that ovulation and therefore the reproductive cycle do not occur during the period of intense lactation following parturition. Therefore, as long as the mother breastfeeds the child fully, chances of contraception are almost nil. However, this method is usually effective only up to a maximum period of six months following parturition. Dear learners, 
you would agree with me that none of these methods have any side effects. However, the concern is that the chances of failure of contraception are very high. Now, we move on to discuss the barrier methods of contraception. In these methods, the ovum and the sperm are prevented from physically meeting each other with the help of barriers. Such methods are available both for males and females. Condoms are barriers made of thin rubber or latex sheath that are used to cover the penis in the male or the vagina and cervix in the female just before coitus so that the ejaculated semen would not enter into the female reproductive tract. This can prevent conception. Nirodh is a popular brand of condom for the male. Many more are available these days. This method has found increased popularity among people as it provides an additional benefit of protecting the user from contracting sexually transmitted infections and AIDS. Both the male and the female condoms are disposable, can be self-inserted and thus ensure privacy to the user. Diaphragms, cervical caps and walls are also barriers made of rubber that are inserted into the female reproductive tract to cover the cervix during coitus. They prevent conception by blocking the entry of sperms through the cervix and are reusable as well. Spermicidal creams, jellies and foams are usually used along with these barriers to increase their contraceptive efficiency. Now, I am sure you can compare the advantages and disadvantages of the natural methods over the barrier methods. Natural methods show no side effects at all, but their higher failure rates make them unreliable. On the other hand, the barriers may have side effects in stray cases, but their success rates and the added advantage of protection against sexually transmitted diseases make them both reliable and preferred. Now, we will discuss those methods of contraception which involve the use of chemicals or hormones. First among these, is another very effective and popular method of contraception. This is the use of intrauterine devices. These devices are inserted by doctors or expert nurses in the uterus through vagina. The different types of IUDs commonly being used are 1 the non-medicated IUDs, example, the lip loop. 2. The copper-releasing IUDs, example, copper T, copper 7, multi-load 375. And the hormone-releasing IUDs, examples of which are progesta cert and LNG20. Let us now understand how they work. IUDs increase phagocytosis of sperms within the uterus. The copper ions released from the copper releasing IUDs suppress sperm motility and the fertilizing capacity of sperms. The hormone releasing IUDs in addition make the uterus unsuitable for implantation and the cervix hostile to the sperm. IUDs are ideal contraceptives for females 
who want to delay pregnancy and or space children. They work for longer time periods and are one of the most widely accepted methods of contraception in India. Oral administration of small doses of either progestogens or progestogen estrogen combinations is another contraceptive method used by the females. They are used in the form of tablets and are hence popularly called as the pills. While using the pills, a specific pattern needs to be followed. They have to be taken daily for a period of 21 days, starting preferably within the first five days of the menstrual cycle. After 21 days, there is a gap of seven days during which menstruation occurs. The same pattern has to be repeated so long as the female desires to prevent conception. Now about their working. They inhibit ovulation and implantation. They alter the quality of cervical mucus to prevent or retard the entry of sperms. Pills are very effective with lesser side effects and require no external help and are quite well accepted by the females. But yes, one needs to be mindful and not forget taking the pill every day or one day of the week as the case may be. You may already know about Saheli, the oral contraceptive for the females that contains a non-steroidal preparation. It is a once a week pill with very few side effects and a high contraceptive value. Progestogens alone or in combination with estrogen can also be used by females as injections or implants under the skin. Their mode of action is similar to that of the pills, but the added advantage is that their effective periods are much longer, could even be three years. And the chance of failure of contraception that can arise due to missing a pill is taken care of in this case. Administering of progestogens or progestogen estrogen combinations or using IUDs within 72 hours of coitus has been found to be very effective as an emergency contraceptive. They are immensely useful as they can be used to avoid possible pregnancy due to rape or casual unprotected coitus. However, their regular use as a contraceptive is unadvisable. Using surgical methods for contraception is also called as sterilization. They are generally advised for the male or female partner as a terminal method. That is, if the couple does not want to have a baby anymore. Surgical intervention blocks gamete transport and thereby prevents conception. Sterilization procedure is called vasectomy in males and tubectomy in females. In vasectomy, a small part of the vas deferens is removed or tied up through a small incision on the scrotum. In tubectomy, a small part of the fallopian tube is removed or tied up through a small incision in the abdomen or through the vagina. These techniques are highly effective, but their reversibility is very poor. It needs to be reiterated again that the selection of a suitable contraceptive method and its use should always be undertaken 
in consultation with a qualified medical professional. One must also remember that contraceptives are not regular requirements for the maintenance of reproductive health. In fact, they are practiced against a natural reproductive event, that is, conception or pregnancy. One needs to use these methods either to prevent pregnancy or to delay or space pregnancy due to personal reasons. No doubt the widespread use of these methods has a significant role in checking uncontrolled growth of population. However, their possible ill effects like nausea, abdominal pain, breakthrough bleeding, irregular menstrual breeding or even breast cancer, though not very common should not be totally ignored. Dear learners, let us now do a quick reinforcement of the concepts learn. The first question, the principle on which natural methods of contraception work is A. Preventing fertilization B. Preventing implantation C. Preventing ovulation and D, preventing embryo development. The answer, dear children, is A, preventing fertilization. Question number two. Emergency contraceptive methods must be used within A, 72 hours of unprotected coitus. B, 72 hours of onset of menstruation. C. 72 hours of ovulation. And D. 72 hours of end of menstruation. The answer, dear children, is A. 72 hours of unprotected coitus. The next question. What methods of contraception do you think would be ideal for a couple A. Who have a daughter and do not want another baby B. Who want to have a second baby after a period of four years and C. Explain how each of these methods work. Think. The answer to the question A is tubectomy or vasectomy? The answer to question B is intrauterine devices or an IUD. The answer to part C is that the surgical method will block gamete transport thus preventing fertilization. Also, since the couple does not want another child, they can go in for a terminal method of contraception. In case two, on the other hand, the couple wants to delay having the second child and hence an IUD is a desirable option. The next question is, what is the chemical composition of the oral contraceptive pills? How is Saheli different from other pills? The answer, the composition is progestogens or progestogen estrogen. Saheli is non-steroidal with lesser side effects and needs to be taken once a week instead of following the 21-7-21 cycle. My dear students, I will end this session today by reiterating again that whenever in doubt regarding any aspect of reproductive health, please seek guidance from your parents and teachers or medical experts. Do not rely on hearsay and what your peers have to say. Thank you. In the next session, we will learn some more aspects of reproductive health.